Hey, um, yeah, I know a lot of you probably think that I'm probably dead or something, or probably not going to post again. Yeah, sorry about that. I was kind of in, in like a pickle or something like that. Um, what happened was my phone got compromised as in like broken, which was pretty tough pretty pretty tough like when it slipped up my hand and then I picked it up off of the um ground only if you could have saw see saw only only if you saw my face you would understand but uh, that, that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna post anything up on there. I'm still gonna have my top ten phones, top ten tablets. Um, I'm gonna start doing mid-range phones for um, PUBG as well. Which what mid-range phone would you want to get for uh, PUBG? I might start doing prices too, so you guys would know which prices are best for a gaming phone at a pretty decent price I know decent varies a lot of people think 300 is a mid-range some people think 500 is mid-range so I'm gonna sc scale it but um that's pretty much it like I, it, it broke I answered a phone call slipped broke it's the saddest thing that ever happened to me and I didn't know what to do like for like two weeks or so I'm just looking at this broken screen on the phone and I'm like my channel might die because I won't be able to post anything but then today I realized I have like old videos that I haven't well I have old videos that I posted that have like zero views like literally zero and I'm thinking I'll just use those for the time being until I get my phone repaired and then I'm going to just upgrade it after I get it repaired you know you just turn it in and you know you get a price reduction I'm going to go to Best Buy or something and get a price reduction on the phone um, Think about either getting the Note 9 or the S10, but I'm thinking about I might just hold off for the S10. All right, now we're gonna talk about the mid-range devices now. So um, they're gonna feature Snapdragon 660, 630, 626, 625-ish, and the 636. Those are gonna be the mid-range phones specs. Well, Snapdragon phones to have those in there. I'll, I'll have the mid-range, the best mid-range phones if if um if if you're trying to play pub. But you most definitely want to get a high-end phone for it. But if um you want to get like mid-range phones, I'll definitely make a top ten mid-range phone videos. I'll do all the research and stuff so I can have a proper video out for it. I already made one for iPhones. That's that's in the past. Even though I, uh, Apple produces a um flagship every year, so it's like each iPhone should be able to play it. So even though I made it, it really doesn't matter. Each iPhone that comes out every year should be able to play it, no problem. Now for Android, each flagship Android should be able to play it no problem. But when you get to the mid-range section, section, and then the entry-level section, that's where you get the the issues and then the lag compensation. Also with older iPhone, like the iPhone 5, 5s, 4, those, even iPhone 3GS, <laughs> those days were awful. So, um, I'll definitely have updates on that. For PUBG. Also, I think I might 
make a video on the best um, low-end laptops to play the emulated version of it so if some of you play on like let's say a Chromebook netbook or like a, a low-end like type of laptop that's still able to run run the game I probably have like a top 5 or 10 for that and f for people who are thinking why am I making a, a video for the 600 series those phones shouldn't be able to, to really play um, PUBG actually those phones can really play the game actually well because um, what most people don't know is let's say you buy a, a brand new phone right well most phones do this but let's say you buy a brand new Android phone alright and you're playing PUBG on it and say it has a Snapdragon 6 636 right it, it is a mid-range phone even those Qualcomm says this is one of the high tier processors that's what Qualcomm says on their website that that 800 series is premium but they say the 600 series is, is high tier so so let's say that you're using the high the high tier processor 636 and and you're playing PUBG using the GFX tool to get the 60 frames per second right and you realize then you want to gain about 35 to 40 because um, your processor has has limitations All right the thing about that is your processor f for your kernel and everything that's that's in your phone is set to interactive meaning that it's gonna do good do bad it's gonna keep everything optimized so it's not gonna use too much power but let's say that you root your I'm not advising you to do this but let's say that you root your 6 636 630 or even your 6 660 right and you put your governor on performance and put your frequency for your CPU and GPU to the max I kid you not you will see 60 FPS playing using the GFX2 I'm not saying on HDR but I'm saying probably on high medium you're gonna see 60 FPS I think only in HDR you might see frame drops probably like 55 50 like that so when people say that the mid-range phones aren't as powerful they actually are but you, you won't get to use 50 to 60 percent of your CPU and GPU usage because I've, I've had apps show me like how much usage am I actually using while playing the games on the highest settings and I'm only using around 50 to 60 now PUBG Timmy uses 75 because it's more high-end graphics so I understand how it pushes a, a little bit further but if um if um, you root most mid-range phones you can compete with the high tier phones automatically you are on the same level so I'll definitely have a video on that so which phones will be able to compete with with the high tier 800 series like Snapdragon 660 and the 710 those two clearly can compete especially rooted those are basically if if um you root a 660 it turns into a 8 a 835 automatically and once you put the frequency up and everything it turns into a snapdragon 8 835 the 710 you root that that turns into a, a snapdragon 8 845 so that's what you will be able to do with those so i'll have videos on that soon so thanks for listening